Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebra. Today's topic are the so-called irreducible polynomials. Or maybe rather, why do we care about irreducible polynomials? Or maybe even rather, what are the analogs of primes um, in polynomials, right? So polynomials, maybe that is already clear by now, uh, kind of are the main crucial examples you like to study in something like algebra, any form of polynomials, they are extremely important. They are kind of the free rings or something, something like that. And yeah, so um, prime numbers are very important, obviously in, well, arithmetic and number theory and everywhere. So maybe it is a good question to kind of study the analog of prime numbers in polynomials. Um, and that's basically what those irreducible polynomials are. So I'm going to explain today why do we care about irreducible polynomials, uh, the formal definition, of course, and also a little bit about uh, how can we check what polynomials are reducible and what polynomials are reducible, right? The, the, the opposite of re irreducible would be reducible. Okay, let's just jump right into it. So um, what is so special about primes? So for today, my definition of special is this one here. So um, what makes a prime special among all other numbers n, all other, let's say, uh, natural numbers n is that z mod n, so uh, calculus modulo n, is a field if and only if n is prime. Um, okay, yeah, that certainly is a special property. And what we want to have for polynomials is kind of an analog. So the polynomial ring modulo an ideal, let's say an ideal spent by one polynomial is a field if and only if f is irreducible, right? If and only if n is prime, if and only if f is irreducible. It's kind of, that's why I want to think of those as being the analog of prime numbers. And what I have in mind as examples are something like this. So um, if you have rational numbers and you take the polynomial x squared minus two, well, you, we come back to that in a second, but x squared minus two, as you can, well, what are the roots of x squared minus two? Plus minus square root of two, but they don't really make sense. So square root of two don't exist in, in the rational numbers. So this polynomial is actually reducible. And this is isomorphic to one of the um, kind of classical examples of field extensions, q adjoint square root of two. And this certainly is a field and the isomorphism is, well, you said X to the root of those of this polynomial, so square root of two. Very similar, uh, actually exactly the same example, just over the real numbers, would be that this polynomial X squared plus one over the real numbers is irreducible. Why? Well, the two roots of this polynomial are of course plus minus I. Uh, here, the two roots, as I said, were plus minus square root of two. And square root of two doesn't make sense in Q and I doesn't make sense in, uh, in R. Basically, that is in this case the same as um, those polynomials being irreducible. And yeah, the isomorphism here to my field C, also a field, is given by X is mapped to I, again to the root. Um, and both of them are fields because both of those polynomials are irreducible. That's, well, that will be the kind of the main theorem. And if you take something like this, well, let's say whatever kind of coefficients, x squared doesn't really look like an irreducible polynomial. It's x times x, of course. So um, you can kind of factor it, right? And that's kind of the whole problem because then x itself in this ring won't be invertible because x times x is x squared. So it's zero in this quotient. So this is not a field. So a non-irreducible polynomial um, in the end doesn't give me a field and two irreducible polynomials give me a field. Right, so let's just have a look at Z mod four. So Z mod four, so what makes Z mod four in some sense bad? Well, here's a multiplication table of Z mod four. And of course you know how it works. So three times three um, is nine. And nine is of course congruent uh, one mod four. 
right? So um, this is what I write here. And the only kind of, kind of, so it looks very nice. And the only kind of weird thing is this row or the column corresponding to two, because for example, it repeats itself. So zero, two, zero, two, that looks a bit strange. And in particular, two times two is actually zero in Z mod four, because two times two is four, of course. And what happens here is that four is reducible in Z. And this just means uh, four is two times two, right? In this case, just you can break four into two smaller bits. So four is two times two. In other words, and that's what you very often see here, um, four Z is not a maximal ideal because four Z is, is contained in two Z. So elements that are divisible by four are also divisible by two. So um, four Z is kind of a bad thing. It's not, it's not maximal in, in, in the sense of um, ideals, ideal containment. And this is exactly what goes wrong here. So, um, so is Z mod 2Z is a maximal ideal. And that's kind of the contrast here. So in other words, this kind of phenomena doesn't happen for maximal ideals because whenever you have an equation like that, it implies that one of your elements is actually already in your ideal. And yeah, and you kill the elements in the ideal. So you don't get any zero devices, right? So let me, let me say it again. Um, so in Z mod four, what happens is that you see an element two and two can't be invertible because two times two is zero and two times two is zero because two, uh, because, because four is not irreducible. You can break four into two non-zero bits, namely two in this case, uh, which are non-zero and so multiply to zero in the corresponding quotient, Z mod four. And that's the whole point. So zero divisors, cannot be invertible, right? So if you have a zero divisor, so let's, so B is my zero divisor here. Well, A is also one, but let, let's use B. So A times B is zero, and then B can't be invertible because if you would have B times C equals one, then you just paste those two equations together and you get A times B times C is zero because A times B is zero and is one because B times C is one. So, um, uh, it would imply that zero is one. So let me do it again. So A times B times C is on one hand, it's zero. And on the other hand, so it's question mark. And on the other hand, it's A because this is one, right? And that's, that's a bad equation. So that means A is zero, but I kind of assume that A is non-zero in, in uh, this equation here. So basically what you get is zero equals one. And yeah, and the whole point is that this is bad. So you don't want any zero divisors. And how can you avoid zero divisors? You avoid them in this framework by um, forcing things to be irreducible. And an example is, for example, another a little bit fancier, and if you take this polynomial x squared minus two, that was the one from before here, which I claim was irreducible in, in Q, but it's of course not irreducible in R because you just look at the two roots and you see that it actually factors in x minus square root of two and x plus square root of two, which just means that this product is actually zero in this quotient. And that's bad because then those polynomials are zero divisors and the quotient is, is, is not a field. It's just, it's just a ring. And it's exactly the same pattern that you see uh, for Z mod, well, four in this case, Z mod, so four Z is not a maximal ideal. And in the same way, this is not a maximal ideal because it certainly contains, let's say uh, X minus square root of two, it is contained in X square, uh, X minus square root of two. In contrast, this doesn't happen in my field here. And because I can't split it further, so this actually is a maximal ideal and we are good, right? So this, this requirement of being irreducible kind of forces things to be maximal ideals and that forces are kind of those quotients to not have any zero devices. And zero devices are usually bad if you want to have inverses because of this equation. Um, which basically means zero, having a zero divisor implies zero is one. 
Um, and that's exactly then the definition. So uh, a polynomial in some, you can make this in multiple variables, it doesn't matter. And over some ring, it doesn't also doesn't matter for the definition. So if A times B equals F, then, well, up to units, of course, we're doing ring theory, we don't care about invertible elements. Um, anyway, so if, if you have the equation A times B equals F, then either A or B are already zero, uh, are already F, which makes, makes this, this irreducible condition, right? Four is two times two, but neither two, uh, neither of them is, is four, right? So four is not irreducible. So four is, is, is a non-example. And as we have seen, that is bad. And that's exactly then the statement that you can cook up. Um, if you have a field and you take a quotient of uh, an irreducible polynomial, then um, so uh, the, of the polynomial ring by an irreducible polynomial, then you get a field. Uh, so kind of these are the primes in the polynomial ring, right? In the sense of my original question, uh, Z mod N is a field if and only if N is a prime, Kx mod ideal spent by f is a field if and only if f is irreducible. Okay, and yeah, so this is really figuring out whether whether a polynomial is is irreducible is really really key. So it's really really important. And I should also stress we have already seen this here that this depends on the underlying uh, on the underlying ring. So whatever whatever field ring whatever I put here whatever I put here. So for example, um, again, this polynomial is reducible in R, but it's irreducible in Q, right? So it really, it really depends. It, it, irreducibility is kind of a condition on the roots. So it depends on what, what field you look at. Um, and yeah, so here is, so irreducible means, implies that you don't have any roots in your underlying ring, for example. Why? Because if you would have a root, you could, you could split off a factor with this root and you, you get a smaller factor. Um, for example, so in, in something like an algebraically closed field like C, a polynomial is irreducible if and only if it's of degree one, which is also saying there are no nice quotients of a Cx or no, no important quotients of Cx because the only thing you can kind of can mod out are polynomials and which forces things to be equivalent to C in any way. Um, and that's not really hard to see because of the fundamental theorem of algebra. So take your degree 15 polynomial, you will find a root, split off the root, you have a degree 40 polynomial, degree one polynomial, and yeah, that just means um, your original degree 50 polynomial wasn't reducible. It wasn't irreducible. In R, um, the condition is a bit more complicated, but not too much. So um, a polynomial is reducible if and only if it's of degree one, okay? Or it is actually of degree two with no real roots, like, like this x squared plus one. Um, what about degree three polynomials? So let's think about it for a second. You have something like um, the intermediate value theorem. So if you have a degree three polynomial, then the associated graph in R looks a little bit like this. So it, it at one point needs to cross the X axis. So it will have a root. And when, whenever you have a root, you can split it off and it won't be uh, irreducible. A bit more tricky is to see why a degree four polynomial can't be irreducible, but uh, basically we can boil it down to um, that this polynomial will be kind of a factor. Anyway, what I want to stress here is that being irreducible definitely depends on the underlying field. In C, irreducible is the same as being degree one. In R, irreducible is the same as being degree one or degree two without real roots, for example. Okay, um, so the key, as I said, is to make sure that um, you, you can check some of whether something is irreducible or not. And this is usually not very easy. There are certain tricks, a lot of tricks, uh, which are kind of, some of them are linked in the description to check whether a polynomial is irreducible. Um, maybe the most famous one, the first one you see in kind of a class on algebra would be the theorem of, of Eisenstein, which looks a bit strange, 
um, it is this following condition. So you have your polynomial with uh, coefficients a n up to a zero, and you take your favorite prime, any, anything works, any prime works, and you have those three conditions here. So you want p to divide all the coefficients except the leading one. Um, well, those are those two conditions. And this funny condition uh, that p squared doesn't divide a zero, okay? And then you can check that it's actually irreducible in qx, which means in qx, you actually have quite a lot of irreducible polynomials, right? You can easily cook up some infinite uh, families of polynomials. Um, the most important ones are probably the so-called cyclotomic polynomials, which are polynomials of the form something like x5 um, for a prime, x4 plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one, for example, would be a cyclotomic polynomial of degree uh, four, so for p equals five. Um, and you can check using Eisenstein. I wrote down here the argument uh, and substitution. So a little bit, of, a little bit of a tricky argument. Not too, not not too bad. Um, that this is actually reducible, and this works for any prime. So we of course get an infinite uh, family of irreducible polynomials in Qx, and you really have an abundance of irreducible polynomials in Qx, uh, which is also kind of saying you have a, a lot of nice field extensions of Q uh, of Q. Because if you take some quotient here, as we have seen um, uh, in this example, you very often or almost always get something nice like, uh, well, nice, nice is of course very biased. Uh, you get something like Q adjoined square root of two, Q adjoined third root uh, of two, something like that. Um, and you have those, this abundance of uh, field extensions of Q. And well, there are several theorems like the Eisenstein theorem to check whether a polynomial is reducible. Um, as I said, some links are in the description and you can also ask a computer program to do it because there are so many, so many ways to, to do it. Anyway, um, let me wrap up. So I kind of want to see reducible as an analog of being prime in polynomial rings. And yeah, kind of the main theorem or the main property of irreducible is that if you take Kx, the polynomial ring and you mod out f, then this is a field if and only if f is irreducible. So for, for nice fields or for fields that you would like to study in algebra, like the rational numbers, you should have a lot of irreducible polynomials because you sh should expect a lot of field extensions. So studying of algebra in some sense in the end will be studying field extensions, at least if you uh, do something like Galois theory and Q because of this abundance of, of irreducible polynomials uh, over Q uh, is a good is is a good starting point to study field extensions. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.